pretty San Francisco. -y. I thought that maybe in LA, I'd do an LA bit. There really is only one good, solid LA -y bit in the book. And I, I thought, you know, rather than me do that, we should do it like the, 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 there's a full cast audio of American Gods. It's just come out where they actually got actors to, to do it. Um, so I thought, well, why don't I get two other people in to help? And Patton was already here, so I asked the, <laughs> the, I asked the lovely and talented Zelda Williams to come up and, uh, and, and become part of this madness. So ladies and gentlemen, big hand. <laughs> no, I can, you can pull the mic out. Okay. The, mic, the mic lifts out. You can pick anything you like with it. You like. <laughs> um. Apple put. Fighting with this book. Um, so, what's nice about this is this is actually from the end of chapter one, which means you're not actually normally. You're an author doing a bit of a reading kind of thing. You have to give everybody the background on the story. But this is rather self-explanatory. This is over self-explanatory. And, and probably there are people who, if they were going to do something like this, might rehearse it. But they, those people are not standing up on the stage in front of you. going to do the narrator voice and all of the he says and she says and things like that. And they get to be the characters. Somewhere in America, Los Angeles, 11.26 p.m. In a dark red room, the color of the walls is close to that of raw liver, is a tall woman dressed cartoonishly in two tight silk shorts. Her breasts pulled up and pushed forward by the yellow blouse tied beneath them. Her black hair is piled high and knotted on top of her head. Standing beside her is a short man wearing an olive t-shirt and expensive blue jeans. He is holding in his right hand a wallet and a Nokia mobile phone with a red, white and blue faceplate. The red room contains a bed upon which are white satin style sheets and an ox blood bedspread. At the foot of the bed is a small wooden table upon which is a small stone statue of a woman with enormous hips and a candle holder. The woman hands the man a small red candle. Here, she says. Light it. Me? Yes, she says. If you want to have me. I should have just got you to suck me off in the car. <laughs> Perhaps, she says. Don't you want me? Her hand runs up her body from thigh to breast. A gesture of presentation as if she were demonstrating a new product. <laughs> red silk scarves over the lamp in the corner of the room make the light red. The man looks at her hungrily. And he takes the candle from her and pushes it into the candle holder. You got a light? <laughs> she passes him a book of matches. He tears off a match, lights the wick. It flickers and then burns with a steady flame, which gives the illusion of motion to the faceless statue beside it, all hips and breasts. Put the money beneath the statue. Uh, Fifty bucks. Yes. Yeah. When I saw you first on Sunset, I almost thought you were a man. Uh, but I have these. She says, unknotting the yellow blouse, freeing her breasts. Hey, so do a lot of guys these days. 
She stretches and smiles. Yes, she says. Now come love me. He unbuttons his blue jeans and removes his olive t-shirt. She massages. <laughs> it's a reading. Uh, it really <laughs> This she looks massages. like Walter Matthau's face. <laughs> she massages his white shoulders with her brown fingers. Then she turns him over and begins to make love to him with her hands and her fingers and her tongue. It seems to him that the lights in the red room have been dimmed and the sole illumination comes from the candle which burns with a bright flame. Uh, what, what's your name? He asks her. Bill Quiz. She tells him raising her head. With a Q. A uh, what? <laughs> Never mind. He's gasping now. <sighs> Let me fuck you. He says. <laughs> I have to fuck you. <laughs> okay, hon. She says. We'll do it, but will you do something for me while you're doing it? Uh, hey. He says, suddenly touch you. I'm paying you, you know. She straddles him in one smooth movement, whispering, I know, honey, I know, you're paying me. And I mean, look at you, I should be paying you, I'm so lucky. <laughs> he purses his, purses his lips, trying to show that her hooker talk is having no effect on him, that he can't be taken, that she's a street whore, for Christ's sakes, while he's practically a producer, and he knows all about <laughs> And he knows all about last minute ripoffs. But she doesn't ask for money. Instead, she says, Honey, while you're giving it to me, while you're pushing that big hard thing inside of me, will you worship me? Will I what? She's rocking back and forth on him. The engorged head of his penis is being rubbed against the wet lips of her vulva. <laughs> <laughs> Will you call me goddess? Will you pray to me? Will you worship me with your body? He smiles. Is that what she wants? <laughs> sure, he says. We've all got our kinks at the end of the day. She reaches her hand between her legs and slips him inside her. Is that good? Is it goddess? He asks, gasping. Worship me, honey. Says Gulpis the hooker. Yes, he says. I worship your breasts and your eyes and your cunt. I worship your thighs and your eyes and your cherry red lips. Yes. She croons, riding him like a storm-tossed boat rides the waves. <laughs> I worship your nipples, from which the milk of life flows. Your kiss is honey, and your touch scorches like fire, and I worship it. His words are becoming more rhythmic now, keeping pace with the thrust and roll of their bodies. Bring me your lust in the morning, and bring me relief and your blessing in the evening. Let me walk in the dark places unharmed, and let me come to you once more and sleep beside you and make love with you again. I worship you with everything that is within me and everything. What are you doing? That feels amazing, so amazing! And he looks down at his hips at the place where the two of them can join, but her forefinger touches his chin and pushes his head back, so he's looking only at her face and at the ceiling once again. Keep talking, honey. She says. <laughs> Don't stop. Doesn't it feel good? It feels better than anything has ever felt. He tells her, meaning it as he says it. Your eyes are stars burning in the shit, the firmament, and your hips are gentle with the lick, the sand, that I worship them. And now he's thrusting deeper and deeper inside her. It feels electric, as if his whole body has become sexually charged.